Okay. Oh, he wants to talk. Let's talk to him. What is this place? Uh, it's an adventure. No, it's a gym, he disagrees, though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. Yeah, let's just keep going. Sounds good. Okay, we'll put the uh, flashlight in our hands. We've been holding onto those, those chain cutters for a while. Sand is dripping from the punch bag. Oh, I can actually go up there, but we'll come back down first. We've got something here. A shot put. We know what that's about. The poster says Sid Sidious Fortis, and the rest is worn off. Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against a mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. A memory from another life when you were young and fit. We can try to lift this. Our head hurts, so that's not good. Probably gonna do actual damage to my body here. Yep. Well, that didn't work. Fuck you, you stupid barbell. Oh, come on. Weightlifting has never been my favorite either. At the station gym, I mean, I prefer running. It clears your head. He steps away from the barbell, letting you recover in peace. Alright, well, we need to use some of these. I didn't really expect our, uh, expect to lose. Smells like leather and sweat. What's this? Hallways blocked by old window panes and debris. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Large demijohn full of strange liquid. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Music is a little bit eerie in here. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. Three dollars and twelve cents. Blue velvet soft to the touch, moth bit. A dollar fifty-five, thank you. with slipstream printed on and on the laminated top layer. More money? Production schedule, filament memory. Steel rotor blades. flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even aether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. 
Who are all these creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering above the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This is important. It's Varahamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Holder, the Dwerg, the humans, and even the headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. The lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate amount of time has gone into the drawing these little Welkin creatures. Why would they spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm-hmm, political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Kim nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from Welkin's. Inspect the photos. The photo col collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm, animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily mi minime, and GPI span the market-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks like a bit of an ca academic calendar, only much more brutal. Keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in the region. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness and concludes, looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner. See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible and you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note reads, the biggest advancement in the role-playing system since the 30s. Yeah, so it's all just like stuff about Dungeons and Dragons, basically, but in this, uh, this world's game, or whatever. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. In its bosom, snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Mainframe. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs off the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you click around with the machine. Or watching you circle around the machine. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of those down at the station, but it, I never really learned how to use it. Well, we can turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal, stirring from its slumber, revealing a viricent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left tangling, disconnected. Yeah, let's put in the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play button starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the, motion, the machine's planner magnetic driver. Oh no, it was already glowing and now it's also making sound? It's probably some alien seal light technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. 
Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on Rue St. Gillesine. This is East in Soldinian, Repeater, Station 1. Please repeat. What is the production schedule? Or is this produ the production schedule? What is this production schedule? The filament you've inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? Good. Please repeat the password. <clears throat> Can you give me a hint? No. Is it my birthday? Still no. This is the police. Please open this thing. I'm contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder fortress accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give access to this filament. <clears throat> I'm afraid we're not doing that unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds like a bad... That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Um, why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. And what's that? This interactive call-on radio play. The static drowns her response. Any other questions? You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. What are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. I'm 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. The lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. Or, okay, but where are you and how did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East and Selindian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, I am sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios on an island on the river Esperance. A small woman, all skin and bone, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses. She stares like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely, for the first time you hear her chuckle through the rustle of static. Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now please tell me if there's anything else I can do. Uh, that's all for now. We'll find the password. Uh, press print. Nothing happens. Okay. Remove the production schedule. Leave. We completed advanced race theory while doing all of this. Everything is calm in the eyes of, a, of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending uh, phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts and go talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Okay. So we'll be able to get past him, probably. And now we can work on rigorous self-critique. Oh, I don't have, uh, I don't have room for it right now. Okay, but we'll do that some other time, I guess. We gotta find the password somewhere. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Okay, this is what we were already... Yeah, we were already looking at that. Let's look at this. Frequency fireplace. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on an alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. Some written notes too, sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear, it looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations. All lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants? Looks like a surveillance program. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to the call station, it looks like. 
A list of names under the station suggests people across six isolas would be playing. Mundi, Insulden, Katla, Grad, Samara, and even Ilmara. All of this gone left, unrealized. My god, the lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking the maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule, he nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing, it's just lines on marble, an echo from times long gone. One has used the fireplace one no one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay. The amount of reading is starting to Okay. What do you make think my brain is going spin on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's just a failed business. The only question is what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks as if... It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games, only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. How are they planning to do that? Through, through call-in stations, he nods at the fireplace. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein, you know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game. Indeed, those Welkins are dead giveaway. He points at a chalkboard. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wirral board game, with heat death thrown in. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling up the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but the lieutenant tilts his head thinking. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. A half smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that, I'm afraid, he says, looking around the der derelict room. The pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh, we're downstairs now. Ice bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. It's a fridge. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines from out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. Gusts of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is inside of the this is the inside of a refrigerator. He takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim, it's a fridge. Of course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face b bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Brevachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. What is a giant ice bear sh shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So they tried to sell ice cream from the hyper carnivore. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What's even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points to the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on the thing must be catastrophic. Okay, we got something. 
item. Handwritten note. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets. Can I like read it or something? I have to interact. The note is written with blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on the surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy and the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sully Slaw. I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised that they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. What's a filament memory? I already know what it is. Belongs inside the radio computer storing its memory. It's like a tape. It's like the production schedule you found, only this one's an off site copy. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? It's Kuno. Some local miscreant, properly. Probably. There are tons of them running around in Martinet, ready to stir up trouble. We usually dispatch our junior officers to deal with them. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it it's somewhere close to the fridge. What is this? Oh, Book of the Greatest Innocence. I'm not going to read that right now. Next time. I'm basically all read out already. Oh, here's an ice cream maker. Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Good job. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. A hole in the wall. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapon cache. Looks like there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And also there appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into the darkness, spiderwebs rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. The lieutenant steps closer. Curious. Are these any good? Inspect them. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This one looks nice. Oh, we got it. An old Bell, Bell Maygrave from the Revolution, the lieutenant notes with approval. His eyes are gleaming. Seems to no longer be functional, but still, a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around Martinet. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Cool. Um, I would like to check something real quick. Cause how do I... Unlock. I don't remember how. Maybe I need to just level something else up. We'll see. Can't do it right now anyway. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Okay, can we go in it? Try to crack open the lid. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. If you want to try again, put the pry bar in your hand. Okay, turn the crank. Turning the crank feels odd oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You've never become a poet. Or you never became a poet or an entroponent. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? Tools. Pry bar. Pry bar is not strong enough. I don't want to break the pry bar. So 
so we won't leave. We need a different pry bar. 70 cents, health. What is this? Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one leads to the ice cream maker. Uh, I'm gonna leave them plugged in. Insane mesh tank top. And that's the way out. Am, have I looked everywhere? I thought I was supposed to find the, the password somewhere around here. Maybe it's in there. Oh, there's still stuff up here. Central furnace. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire, only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? We should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Smear your hands with coal. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Bramut Kerasi, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. I'm not gonna put it on my face. Kick it with your foot. Oh! I didn't think that would hurt. Why would you kick something so hard that it would hurt you? And what is this? Two dollars. And magnesium. Okay. It seems as though we have thoroughly searched this area. I'm pretty sure this is just the way out. Oh, there's money over here. I didn't even see this spot. 45 cents. A cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. There was like nobody out there before. Hmm. <clears throat> 